and Holy Spirit. And the blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons, and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there, and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. The word of the Lord. Amen. Portion of Psalm 66 appointed for today responsibly by whole verse. <laughs> Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, come awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies rich before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his living toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his mind he rules forever, his eyes keep watch over the nations, that no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you Make the voice of his praise to be heard. We will bless our souls in life, and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment.
a lesson from the second book of Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this, and warn them before God, that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Which is better, to give thanks or to give praise? Is it better to give thanks to God or to praise God? Or maybe in your mind they're both equal? This particular passage from Luke's Gospel, which is really, really short, invites many commentators to think about gratitude and they talk about giving thanks. But there's something else at work here. Now, I have sometimes said to you that there's not one word of the Bible that's a wasted word. Everything has been distilled for centuries and centuries. And so there's not one word or one phrase that is a throwaway phrase or a throwaway word. And this little nugget of a narrative is chock full of goodness. We don't have a half hour to go through it bit by bit. But I do want to touch on some things. First of all, Jesus is working his way by a circuitous route from Galilee down to Jerusalem for his final days. And the Gospel tells us that he is in the region between Galilee and Samaria. Well, Galilee and Samaria are side by side. There is no real region in between. But on the other hand, there was no marked border either. There were no uh, outposts to say, now you are in Galilee, now you are in Samaria. But certainly there were little villages all through this area and Jesus is moving with his entourage because he by this time in his ministry is many followers and I'm sure they're raising a cloud of dust as they essentially walk down donkey tracks from one village to the next and as he is walking there is a group of ten men ten men in torn clothing with their hair long and disheveled, and covering their faces with their cloaks, and crying out to him with one voice. Now, you notice I did not call them lepers, and that's because the gospel does not call them lepers. The gospel calls them men with leprosy, leprous men. And I'm going to just take a little moment to get on my soapbox about how we talk about people's disabilities diseases, infirmities. We have a bad habit, at least in English, of identifying people by their disease, as if that's all there was to them. We don't do it as much as we used to. We've learned, I think, as a culture, not to call people with cerebral palsy spastics. We don't call people with Down syndrome idiots. And that's what was done, and that language was in the law. 
That is how we used to speak about people with disabilities. We don't do that anymore. There is nothing so mean-spirited as to call a person by their disease or their disorder or their affliction and make that their label, their identity, because it masks the person who may be a loving friend, a beloved son, a writer, an artist, someone maybe the gift they have to offer is they have a sunny smile, which they share with everyone. And when we put labels on them, we deny them their humanity. And the gospel did not deny these men their humanity by calling them lepers. It called them men with leprosy. Now leprosy, of course, for us today is a modern understanding is a disease called Hansen's disease. It's caused by a bacteria and it does cause uh, wounds in the skin. It also causes nerve damage and joint pain and eventually blindness and hair loss and organ damage. And you know we have this image of people with leprosy as missing their fingers or their ears. Or, and that's in large part because um, they can't feel, and so they might injure themselves and not know that they wounded themselves and then infection set in. But leprosy didn't mean Hansen's disease in the Old Testament. In fact, the word in the Old Testament for leprosy has more to do with being stricken. A person is stricken. They're stricken by these um, scaly patches on their skin, and it could be psoriasis. It could be eczema, it could be scabies, it could be any number of diseases that affect the outward appearance. Leprosy was not diagnosed by doctors. It was diagnosed by priests. They would inspect the person's body, and if the patches of, of flaky white skin or red scaly skin was there, you were a leper. And you were sent outside the city walls, outside the camp, the village. And there you lived in accordance with Mosaic law, with torn clothing, disheveled hair, covering your face, not speaking to people. And wherever you went, you would put your hand over your mouth and say, unclean, unclean. Because leprosy was not perceived so much as a disease, a contagious disease, although it could be, but as a sign of sin of defilement, of some kind of deep-seated wrong in the person. And so for that reason, the person was separated from their community. And just as the disease itself might consume the body, so sin was seen as consuming the person and best to have that person separated from the rest of the community. And so we have 10 men with leprosy. Now, 10, you might know, is the minimum number of men required for a minion. A minion, the number of Jews gathered together for prayer, for worship. But there's a thing about having leprosy that puts these men together, no matter what their backgrounds are. Jews and Samaritans despised each other, going back centuries. But a disease, an affliction, the law of Moses has brought together these 10 men, and there they stand at the side of the road, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I'm sure they actually wanted money. They probably were beggars. They probably had their begging bowls with them, and what they really wanted was alms because they had no other way to make a living. How would they survive if they didn't beg? But Jesus responds in a way that is completely unexpected. He just says to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were healed. Their wounds disappeared. And off they went to the priest. Jesus didn't touch them. He didn't lay hands on them. 
He didn't come close to them. I'm sure he stood at a distance in accordance with the law of Moses. And he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. And one came back. Now, very often in the commentaries, there's a sort of way of looking askance at these nine who went to the priest and appraised for the one who came back. But the nine who went to the priest did exactly what they were told to do. There was nothing wrong with what they did. I'm sure they were grateful because by going to the priest and performing the necessary rituals and bathing, uh, cleansing themselves, and uh, uh, going through a sort of a period of separation, uh, they would be restored to their families. They could hug their children again. They could go to work again. They could invite friends for dinner. They could go to the synagogue. They could go to the marketplace. And they could resume their lives in community. And I'm sure they were grateful for that and blessed. And they understood that only God could do this. And so they went to the priest to be certified as clean. And so we mustn't look askance at them for their, I'm sure, gratitude for what had happened. But one turned back. One came back and praised God with a loud voice, threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he was thankful. And Jesus, sort of speaking over the man's head, actually, kind of addressing this audience that we assume was around him, says, were there not ten? Where are the other nine? Only this one, this foreigner, he came back, just this one. And he looks at the man and says, your faith has saved you. Or... Translated another way, your trust has restored you. You are whole again. You are a whole person again. So if leprosy represents sin, this man has been forgiven. Now I said at the beginning, what's more important, thanks or praise? I don't know what you think. You can tell me about it afterwards. But I have been dwelling on this question now for a few days. And the reason is there are very few places, if I'm remembering correctly, where you can see the word uh, giving thanks in Luke's gospel. But everywhere in Luke's gospel, and through most of the Old Testament, and in the Psalms, and even in Lamentations, there's praise. Praise is the principal act of response to God's work on our behalf. Thanks is great. We teach our children to say thank you. We want them to write thank you notes. You know, we know that when you are working with volunteers, you must go out of your way to thank them. Everybody wants to be thanked. The barista hands you your coffee, you say thank you. The waiter puts the plate down in front of you and you say thank you. You just do it, it's habit. It's, it's kind of the grease that, you know, keeps social relationships moving smoothly. But praise, how often are you praising God. How often do any of us do that? People keep gratitude journals, you know, they will think to themselves, I'm going to write down today at the end of the day all the things that I was grateful for, and it's not a bad exercise. It's actually a, a pretty good way to reflect on your day and to find some goodness in it. But I don't know anyone who keeps a praise diary you? Praise is the principal response to God's goodness and God's love. In the very beginning of Luke's gospel, we hear it in Mary's song. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. 
and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because God has lifted up the lowly and fed the hungry. She doesn't say, thank you, Lord, for making me the mother of the Savior of the world. That is not her response. Her response to knowing that she is the mother of the Savior of the world is to praise God. And then the shepherds, when they come to the stable in Bethlehem and they see the child, they leave rejoicing and praising God, waking up the whole town. It's praise. It's praise in the psalm, you heard, and in many of the psalms, even in the midst of lamentation, when the prophet bewails the fate of the city and of its people and the dire circumstances that they are in. The prophet takes a moment to praise God. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All that I needed, thy hand has provided. Praise in the middle of terrible times. And so I think I'd like to challenge us. I'm going to challenge myself to take a moment every evening when I get ready for bed and I would ordinarily say my prayers. I'm going to take a moment to think about praise and why and what I can praise God for. And when I get up in the morning, I'm going to try to remember to do this, even before I get my coffee. And believe me, I don't do much until I get my coffee. I'm going to think about what is it? What is it that I can praise God for this morning? I can still remain thankful. But I can offer praise. Oh my gosh, if you were here later this afternoon, when the Pentecostal congregation comes in here, their Haitian, their community was very badly struck by COVID. They lost a deacon and members of their community, and yet they come in here and they start by just shouting, Alleluia, Alleluia, praise the Lord. And they do it with such vigor, and then they'll start to sing, and they'll clap, and they'll sing, and they'll praise God, and they will give their testimonies, mostly in Creole, but they really just give it all up. They give it all up for the Lord. Episcopalians are a little shy about that. We just don't want to give it up and start shouting. That's not our custom, right? But that doesn't mean we can't praise God and find ways to do it and think about what to praise God for. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All that I needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became.
became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made in heaven. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bishop William, our Bishop, for Megan and Ali, our priest, and Vasu, our deacon. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, Philip, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority to this nation and in the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Amen. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, and strengthen those who care for them, especially those who have asked our prayers, including Joyce, Patsy, Carl, Janine, Patricia, Vibarn, Barbara, Bruce, Carol, Barbara, Herb, Mildred, Valerie, Robert, Tom, Hybert, Sean, Ralph, Yvonne, Pat, Jacob, and Susan. that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those whose lives are linked with ours, especially those celebrating birthdays. And anniversaries and all other occasions. Let us rejoice in the Lord always. We pray for those who mourn but no longer see. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of your will shine upon them. We praise for you. We pray you praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. For Susan. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet your name. forward to the day when we can get back to sharing the peace the way we always did at St. Luke's, just get up and wander around and say hello to folks. Please take advantage of a little coffee chat at the end of the service today. Um, Noreen has brought in goodies, there's coffee and tea, so come and say hello to one another, please. Um, we are collecting for hurricane relief and hoping to send our contribution maybe in November, we'll give ourselves some time, uh, to two organizations. One is Episcopal Relief and Development, which is the organization that uh, serves communities both in this nation and around the world on behalf of the Episcopal Church. But the other is the Harry Chapin Food Bank in Fort Myers. Harry Chapin was a philanthropist and a food activist, and the food bank is named for him. There's a great deal of need, as you can imagine. Not everybody who lives in that part of Florida has a beautiful home on Sanibel, or lived in a lovely, you know, uh, marina condominium. There are many poor people who lost their homes and lost the food they had as well. I just want to say yesterday's service at Grace St. Paul's, which some of you attended, uh, where uh, Father Mike was installed as their priest in charge was just lovely. It was a wonderful event, wonderful to see the bishop, wonderful to see the congregation, the church decorated, lovely reception afterwards. Um, if you get a moment and you want to send a little note to uh, Father Mike, you can do that. Uh, he's very proud of his congregation, and rightly so. Um, and the last thing I want to draw your attention to is something from the diocese. It starts today. It's called My Way of Love. It's sort of a survey, and it's meant to be uh, helpful for all of us as we discern our spiritual growth. Um, it's an online survey, so if people are not um, able to access the internet or to complete a survey online, I'll see what we can find from the diocese. But the, uh, the link is here on the last page, and you can go ahead and, um, and try it out. It opens up today, and it continues for the rest of the month. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and then forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Amen. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.